for the average Filipino who may or may not be interested in art, they think of art in terms of paintings and sculptures. If you're finding yourself thinking that you are looking at a painting now, well, yes, as it is a drawing, but there is another form of art there. No, it's not the oblation, which of course is a sculpture. Give up. It's the flower beds. Now, if you're wondering if being a plantito or plantita yourself makes you an artist, that's not the point of discussion here. But the flower installation is what is called installation art. Installation art is, quote, a genre that refers to temporary constructions or assemblages made of varied materials that are structured within a space, unquote. The flower beds were not there before Tom Leon E. Mouse set it up at UP using varied materials like the plants, covers, and the beds. At least I think they are beds. And this is what installation art calls from the viewers. We don't just look at their photos, but we come experience them in actual. And like in paintings and sculptures that may look exactly the same as in the photos and make us passive audiences because we just stand there, installation art is 3D. It calls for active participation to experience it, and I'm not talking about selfies. When you look at installation art, or specifically public art, as Toyme's installation is located in an open space, our tendency is to go around them. We don't just look at it from one angle like it's something flat. We go around it following its shape and formation. Every plant bed might look the same, but somehow we will find ourselves going through each and every one of them expecting a different experience, not only when we observe them, but the act of walking from one bed to another is an experience in itself. In a way, it's like we are retracing the steps of the artist and the people who helped them install it. Hence, installation art is very experiential. But as expected from most art, installation artists have a message. For this one, Toyn wants to quote, Honor those who have given their life for freedom against tyranny. Now embraced by the land where they stood their ground to defend, remembered by the people they swore to fight for and protect. As Twain is an installation artist, he has done several in the past. This one he installed again in UP to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the 1971 Diliman Commune. If you're like me, you're wondering what is the Diliman Commune? That is what installation art offers, if not the next. It asks us, the viewers, to, well, ask in two ways. We ask others, like the artists, if we have access, about the topic the art pertains to. It might lead us to further conversation if we are interested or we stop there. But from that moment on, our knowledge has been added. I mentioned that installation art makes us ask in two ways. The second way is asking ourselves. This is common in every form of art. We are asked to reflect on what is before us. Installation art may ask us to reflect on the message, on the way it was installed, or on the materials used. But what installation art with the message almost always brings out in us is a reaction, be it intellectual or emotional. It might even be physical if we are viewing display like what Point did at the height of the surge when all hospitals had to turn away COVID patients as they were overflowing. Point put the beds up at Philippine General Hospital. Obviously, they are hospital beds, but they do not symbolize patients, but our fallen frontliners, especially in the medical field. Does it help if I tell you that these beds are condemned beds and are over 50 years old? How old are you? Are the beds as old as you or older? Does the age of the bed make a difference for you if you were the patient? This is what I mean by insulation art forcing us to ask things when we are confronted by it. Ema installed 12 beds to represent each month of the lockdown when it first started. Remember how you felt when you realized you were observing the first anniversary of being scared of a drop of sweat or saliva from somebody else? Remember how angry you were during those months when you saw how ineffective or lacking the government's response was. Or maybe you felt sorry for the government that you felt tried very hard, but their effort was not enough to contain the virus. And then we have Jingoy Buen Sucesos Kaini installed in CCP in April 2022, a month before the presidential election. 
it's no longer there because that's the essence of installation on. If it's installed, it has to be uninstalled later as the space it occupies was made for something else, in other words. But if you had seen the figures which were supposed to represent 1,000 people, the question you'll be asking is, what's the 1,000 all about? Well, the artist posted in his Facebook account, Tao tao kasama ka ba sa isang libo? Kainin forest bloomed in pink. Yes, those are pink ribbons. They were there originally. As it was a month before the elections, everybody back then would not be blamed to associate it with the unsuccessful presidential bid of former Vice President Lenny Robredo. So naturally, some people were upset how CCP allowed quote-unquote electioneering in its art premises. So the pink ribbons became red, with CCP saying that it is a quote, thread of fate tied around the world, and it's a tie that binds us. This is a prayer for a revolution, and each one of us is the revolution. It is also to connect 1,000 sculptural bulls or anthropomorphic figures as part of the Earth Month celebration. Whatever the artist's intent was, or the venues, as in all forms of art nowadays, it is the viewer's interpretation that will prevail. That will be the takeaway. Viewer's takeaways are essential. Art is essential. Mm -hmm.